Hello everyone. Our paper this afternoon is called Creating an Open Access Digital Repository of Archaeological and Experimental Ceramics, the Tracing the Potter's Wheel Approach. Tracing the Potter's Wheel is a five-year research project funded by the Dutch Research Council, or NVO. Our project is designed to identify and assess the appearance of the Potter's Wheel as a technological innovation within the Bronze Age Aegean, roughly 2500 to 1200 BC, through the integration of experimental, analytical and digital archaeological approaches. A major output of the project is an archive which captures and shares technologically focused information about forming techniques for archaeological and experimental ceramics. As a project, we are committed to creating open access publications and resources, and it is in this light that the TPW archive has been designed as a dynamic learning tool which marries the stable storage of digital pottery information with a user-focused interface. A number of specific challenges exist in relation to the Tracing the Potter's Wheel project's goals for creating this stable and user-friendly repository of our pottery records. These include the nature of the data types our archive is composed of, our interest in being guided by design thinking, and our understanding of the nature of a common vision in pottery archives. Over the course of fieldwork and analysis, the Tracing the Potter's Wheel project has generated a large volume of data composed of multiple file types for images, video footage, 3D models and texts, as well as the contextual information for all of those files, including metadata and paradata. This challenge was an important one to meet because the value of making such an archive is the presentation of information in its context. File types need seamless interconnections to illustrate different points. In effect, we collect data in different formats to gain different insights into the nature of a number of specific archaeological pots. Presenting these different file formats side by side is essential for illustrating the complexity of that object. This project does capture and present information about different kinds of pottery. However, the specific needs for presenting an archaeological pot are different from presenting an experimental pot. And as such, the kinds of information which populate the context also differ. The TPW database also presents the 3D models of both experimental and archaeological pots. A major difference between our archive and others is the integration of these models alongside other types of object representation. It is important to highlight the fact that each of the file types and the types of objects described in those file types have different metadata needs. Although our metadata standards exist in data models such as Dublin Core and SIDOC CRM, it is our finding that work remains to be done to translate these models into domain-specific language for more ready implementation for archaeological materials, particularly in the case of smaller projects who may not be able to outsource this important aspect of sharing their data. The presentation of our research data within this archive has been guided by design thinking. Our research tackles a topic which relies on trained specialists for application, the recognition of forming traces to identify potting techniques used, which makes for a steep learning curve to non-specialists as well to a very niche audience for the value of the archive. The ill-defined problem we wished to address in this case was the need for us to guide non-specialists through the process of becoming increasingly well-informed while also finding intuitive ways to navigate the archive. By explicitly incorporating and prominently featuring learning pathways, we can increase our audience, which has the effect of widening participation in this type of pottery analysis. Beyond this, we also wanted to provide a platform for others to submit their own data for presentation in the archive. A last challenge we wished to explore is the idea that a common vision may still be missing for pottery archives in general. Instead of seeking the presence of a common vision, perhaps it is better to invest in infrastructure so that pottery archives are readily integrated and interoperable. Efforts such as adhering to SIDOC CRM, which provides the semantic glue needed to mediate between different sources of cultural heritage information, 
such as that published by museums, libraries and archives, is one explicit method of laying pathways for integration and interoperability. Europeana provides a platform on which European cultural data is displayed but not hosted. The real challenge, perhaps, then, is meeting the criteria for complex data models like SIDOC CRM and participating in wider open access dissemination efforts like Europeana. By engaging with wider ranging efforts such as these, there is less risk of falling into obsolescence. The Dutch initiative of DANCE facilitates the deposition of complete data sets or static archives with the capacity for a limited number of iterative updates and where each iteration is assigned an individual DOI. This situation appears overly reliant upon models for digital archiving of written text and ignores the dynamic opportunities that a more active archive could bring to researchers. The benefits of digital data repositories whether static or active, allow information to become openly available and accessible, creating opportunities for reuse of that data set in subsequent research. Perhaps as a result of the DOI attribution system, there is as yet no potential to create a digital resource that can be continuously updated, such as a repository or archive that has the ability to accommodate the research input of multiple teams or sources working towards a shared research goal. For this reason, we will deposit our archive with DANCE as a static repository at the end of this year as part of their small data project incentive scheme. This fund has also given us the opportunity to partner with developers Cabell and Postman for the design of an active archive that will be hosted by the University of Amsterdam, where our project is based. We believe that an active archive, one in which resources are updated as new research is undertaken, is an important part of communicating and contextualizing our research. By increasing opportunities for research collaboration, both present and future, the TPW project better fulfills its societal impact goals and moves closer to answering the wider question of the innovation of the potter's wheel. From the outset of this project, we have considered the users of our datasets by recognising the need for a research tool that is suitable for specialists and non-specialists alike. Our active archive provides learning pathways for users to maximise the potential of the dataset, as well as laying the groundwork for future addition of compatible datasets. This is achieved by accommodating users' learning processes, by providing access to material, contributing to those material sources, and offering instruction in the techniques generating the datasets, all of which in turn reproduce and strengthen those datasets. Differentiating between the front and back end of the archive has also been important. A user-friendly front end is an active means to increase accessibility for those interested in these learning processes, while focusing on the back end structure has facilitated easy transmission and data aggregation for portals such as Europeana. To achieve this, Outsourcing aspects of database construction and design has been pivotal. This is especially true for research projects operating within national funding frameworks, where research time is limited and often does not allow for the acquisition of the necessary data expertise as well as the primary research. Public accessibility and long-term sustainability are familiar concepts for data professionals who can also provide valuable perspectives on avoiding common pitfalls in presenting heritage data, issues of data storage and compatibility of software. Our collaborators, Cabell and Postman, have brought their current expertise in dynamic databases to our archaeological expertise and together we have created something innovative in use and in reuse within pottery database practice. As always, unexpected hurdles emerge in any research project. One that we all share today is that of COVID-19, a global pandemic that has, possibly irrevocably, 
altered the landscape for future research collaboration. Digital resources have become more important than ever as we struggle to access material, undertake field research, and also can no longer meet in person with colleagues in international conferences such as this. In some ways, this hurdle has become a strong impetus for innovation, allowing us to consider existing digital ceramic collections, how we use them, and also how they might be improved. Based on the work that we have done and continue to do, there are a few future directions which we've identified as meaningful to pursue. The major task ahead is to become advocates for others to contribute to our archive and to make use of it themselves. After all, the project aims have been to increase the understanding of how pottery wheel technology spread across the Aegean over time. And establishing that understanding is really beyond the scope of any one single project. In order to train both specialists to recognise and interpret evidence for pottery production technology, as well as gather data on that evidence, we have a responsibility to make contact with different potential users of the archive. We are asking that heritage-focused museums, institutions and organisations join and contribute in order to maximise their resources. We have created the infrastructure and the training tools so that the barriers to contributions are lower. We will also continue to advocate for our colleagues to participate and contribute. We also ask that they consider using and discussing the archive during specialist conferences. Lastly, we will be continuing our mission to widen access to general users. This is indeed an archive, but it is also a powerful learning tool which can help users transition into the role of a specialist. Thank you.